All right, so in the previous chapter, we learned how to sum torques, and summing those torques led to a change in angular motion or a angular acceleration. However, now we want to be able to sum torques and have the system not rotate, so dealing with equilibrium. And before we do that, because remember, it matters now where the force is applied in the system. We can't just do a free body diagram or reduce everything down to a dot. We need to talk about where and why in order to apply the force to the gravity for an extended object. And you already saw this a little bit when we were talking about rotation in previous chapters, but I want to more formally introduce this at this point in time by talking about the center of mass or center of gravity. Now, if we have some sort of wiggly object, we're trying to find the center of mass or center of gravity. And so we're trying to find a point where the mass would be equal in all radial points around that center of mass point. So essentially it's trying to find the balance point in the system. So you have equal mass on one side compared to the other. So in order to do that, we're going to sum torques. So we're going to start with the idea of we're going to pick an initial zero point, but then wherever the center of mass would, we would actually just move that zero point then once we're done. So this is finding the center of mass relative to some point inside the object we set equal to zero. So we set up a coordinate system in essence. So we're going to say the torque of one individual particle, so we're going to start with some random particle that makes up the object, is equal to the mass of that particle times g times its distance from wherever we set zero to inside the object. And the torque of the whole object then is equal to the mass of the object times g times wherever the center of gravity is. All right, so on one side of the equation, we would have mass of particle one times g plus mass of particle 2 times g plus however many particles we have times the position of center of gravity. And that's going to equal the mass g position of each individual particle. So instead of being an arbitrary particle 1, you would be particle 1 plus particle 2 etc. Now at this point, this is where center of mass and center of gravity can be different from each other. The only time there's a difference between the two is if you have such an extended object above the surface of the earth such that g actually changes with altitude. So we'll learn in the next unit how to calculate g based upon your distance above the surface of the earth. So if you have a large object like a space tether or a space elevator, there would be a difference between the center of mass and center of gravity because g changes along the extended object. But for some small object that we're dealing with on, near the surface of the Earth, g is not going to change. So I can actually cancel out g on both sides so that we end up with this. So rearranging we can say that the center of mass, or center of gravity, is equal to the sum of each particle, so the mass times its position, summed over all particles, divided by the total mass of the system. And you would have to do this for each dimension. So this is the procedure you would have to go through if you have some sort of lumpy object that is not symmetrical. And that would be pretty complicated because you have to think about how many particles an individual object would be made up of. But we want to be able to find that balance point, remember, in order to know where to apply the force due to gravity or the weight of the object when we're summing torques. 
So we are going to deal with, as we often do in physics, a perfect world where we're going to have objects that are homogeneous and symmetric. And for homogeneous symmetric objects, you assume that the balance point, so that point where you have equal mass on either side, is at the center of the object. So you're going to apply the force to gravity at the center of the object. So you're going to apply G at the center of the object. So that is much easier than having to go through the process of summing over all particles to figure out that because there's a little more mass over here compared to over here, you're going to have to shift and the center of gravity is here. So there's equal mass applied in this direction compared to in this direction. So you're trying to find that balance point. And it's much easier to do with homosynthetic symmetric objects because you can assume that it's at the center of the object.